Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about lipids, specifically the classification of lipids. So to recall from our first lesson from our worksheet, glycerol is a trihydric alcohol. This means it's got three OH groups. That's what makes it an alcohol. Each glycerol molecule, which is this entire area here, joins with three fatty acid molecules. A fatty acid molecule is COOH with OR. OR is the variable which represents the hydrocarbon long chain. Now, the more carbons that are in a molecule, the heavier it is, and therefore the more calories or energy it provides. So because um, fat is very high in calories, can you remember how many? It's nine calories per one gram, compared to four calories per one gram for carbohydrates and four calories per one gram for protein. So because the molecule is so big, we write down OR, because each of the hydrocarbon chains is going to be different for every fatty acid, depending on what food it's in. So the OH, or the, the trihydric alcohol, joins with the H from this fatty acid molecule. And that happens three times to produce three molecules of water. And then you get this triglyceride. So a triglyceride is one glycerol and three fatty acids. So just to recall um, what makes up an actual fatty acid. So three of these joins together with a glycerol molecule. The CH3 at the beginning of the equation refers to the methyl group. The CH2 refers to the hydrocarbon chain and the small n represents the amount of time that, that, times that hydrocarbon chain is going to be repeated. And then the COOH is the carboxyl group. So all fatty acids have this formula and depending on the food that they're found in, the n is the only part that's going to change. So you can see here that lipids are huge, big, long molecules and thank goodness you don't have to learn them all off by heart. So just you need to know that they're very long, very carbon heavy. This is why they contain so much energy. So the general things that you need to know in this section are the classification, structure, different examples, functions, interrelationship with coronary heart disease, sources, distribution of lipids and so on. In this class, this short class, you're going to be able to describe at the end of it the basic chemistry of a range of fatty acids. You'll understand how fatty acids are classified and you'll be able to give food sources examples of saturated, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids. So first of all, what do all macronutrients have in common? Well, they are all um, providers of energy. You can note from this slide that when you have one glycerol that combines with three fatty acids to form a triglyceride, the OR variable or the hydrocarbon chain can be of different lengths and there can be different combinations of fatty acid in each food. So not one food contains just one type of fatty acid. It's normally a combination. You can find up to 40 different fatty acids combined as triglycerides within food. Now, the simplest way to classify um, fatty acids is to divide them into saturated and unsaturated. And then unsaturated gets subdivided into polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fatty acid. Polyunsaturated is the most complex um, area, or it's, uh, there's more to talk about there. We've got omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids classified underneath polyunsaturated fatty acids. So in a very simple kind of way, we know that saturated fat mainly comes from animal sources, for example, meat, butter and dairy products. We know that it's solid at room temperature, for example, butter. And we know that saturated fats increase levels of bad cholesterol. Bad cholesterol is known as LDL cholesterol or a low density lipoprotein. And this clogs arteries. Unsaturated fat, however, is liquid at room temperature and tends to be things like vegetable oils. And unsaturated fat has a positive effect on cholesterol. It helps to mop up and grab up any um, rogue LDL going around the body. So having oily fish in your diet literally helps to mop up cholesterol. Now let's look at saturated fatty acids. And why is it called saturated? Well, why saturated fat is called saturated is because 
all of the carbon chain, all the hydrocarbon chain is saturated with its full quota of hydrogen atoms. So saturated fatty acids are solid at room temperature, 18 degrees Celsius, from animal sources, with the exception of cocoa butter, coconut oil and palm oil. And that's why I get so annoyed when people say have coconut oil, it's really healthy. You know, um, it does contain high amounts of saturated fat. But it's great for cooking because it reaches really, really high temperatures. And there's higher melting points in saturated fat, um, which is why uh, it's good for frying. Um, raises total blood cholesterol levels and LDL levels, so it's not good for cholesterol levels. And examples of fatty acids would be saturated fatty acids would be stearic acid, which is found in meat, and butyric acid, which is found in butter. So we can see here on a saturated fatty acid chain, we've got zero double bonds along the, the carbon chain, and we've got our little um, carboxyl group there at the end. Okay. Then we go to monounsaturated fatty acids. And monounsaturated basically means there's one double bond between two carbons. And when you have one of those double bonds, it loses um, two hydrogens there. So the, there's never any hydrogen at either side of the double bond, at one side of the double bond, when it's monounsaturated or when there's a double bond. Now, polyunsaturated fatty acids, you might have guessed, have more than one double bond. These are also soft or liquid at room temperature. They come from plant and marine sources, for example, sunflower oil and oily fish. They have the lowest melting point, which means they're going to break down and decompose at very, very low temperatures, which isn't good. So you can turn polyunsaturated fatty acids into bad fats by heating them to really, really high temperatures. Examples are linolenic, linolenic and arachidonic acid and you need to know what these are these are the essential fatty acids so that's linoleic linolenic and arachidonic acid you need to learn them off by heart so looking at polyunsaturated fatty acids here we've got butyric acid which is saturated fatty acid there's no double bond along the carbon chain here we have monounsaturated fatty acid for example what's found in oleic acid which is found in olive oil and there's one double bond between the carbon. You can see that the hydrogen is at the same side of this chain whereas in the previous diagram the hydrogen was up and that does actually matter. The main thing that you want to go for when you're looking at the chemistry is that the hydrogen is on the same side of the carbon um, chain. This means it's um, a cis fatty acid which we'll go into in another tutorial. Linoleic acid is also known as polyunsaturated fatty acid, um, or sorry, that's an, linoleic is an example of an essential polyunsaturated fatty acid. And there's two double bonds along the carbon chain for linoleic acid, which you'll find in things like walnuts. And linoleic is the most abundant polyunsaturated fatty acid that's found in food. So linoleic is otherwise known as a PUFA, and PUFA stands for polyunsaturated fatty acid, and this is a common abbreviation and terminology that's used in food science and nutrition. Two double bonds. So your homework after this assignment is to describe the structure and give one example of each of the following, a saturated fatty acid, a monounsaturated fatty acid, and a polyunsaturated fatty acid. And to conclude, just remember that not all fat is bad. We can sometimes get a little bit preoccupied with fat and try to exclude it from our diet when we hear that it's very high in calories. We need fats. We need them um, for cell membranes, for if you think about your brain being mainly composed of fat. So just to remember that to conclude this lesson. Thanks for watching. Bye.